From WYLN Hazleton, this is Topic A Live at 5 with 35 Weather. One full hour of today's up-to-the-minute information and conversation along with Northeastern Pennsylvania's most detailed and accurate weather. Topic A Live at 5 starts now. Good afternoon. It is 5 o'clock on this Friday afternoon, and it's the Friday on my mind edition of Topic A here on WYLN. In just a few minutes, Dave Yonkai will join me. And today, Dave and I are going to be joined by Congressman Lou Barletta, and we've got a whole ton of things to uh, talk with the uh, congressman about. It's odd as I was putting a list of subjects together uh, last night and this morning to talk about. It's kind of odd in that the condition we are in the world right now, uh, not a lot of them are domestic. A lot of them are uh, international and foreign of, uh, in nature because of, of course, Syria and Egypt and the Middle East and all the rest of that. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. Got a couple of breaking stories for you. One from Hazleton, one from Wilkes-Barre, and a bunch of other things all coming up in the next few minutes. We will get to all of them in just a few minutes. First, as we always do, we start outside. In the Bedrock Gardens Outdoor Weather Center with Joe G. And Joe, absolutely perfect day today. Just gorgeous. Oh, absolutely. It is uh, very nice across our region today. Got the sunshine out here. Uh, literally no clouds. A few of those high, thin clouds, but that's about it. Uh, beautiful conditions, comfortable conditions. Yeah, a little bit breezy from time to time, but overall not bad. Here's what we can expect uh, looking over the Cunningham Valley. You'll be able to uh, see that in a little bit. But before we even get to any of that, we got no advisories, no watches to talk about. Remember yesterday at this time we talked about some frost advisories in effect? Not the case tonight. It's going to be a little bit milder tonight than what we saw last night. We'll show you what you can expect over the Cunningham Valley and what you can expect for those high school football games in this upcoming weekend coming up in a few. Just perfect top-down weather, as I used to say in my disc jockey days. All right, Joe, back with details in the next few minutes. Those breaking stories, the one from Hazleton is on Hazleton's northwest side. Happened on uh, 8th and Alter Street earlier today. Two people were arrested for uh, selling heroin. Uh, I think I just heard in my ear that we do have it. So here is some video from that arrest. At this point, not a lot of details. So we do know that uh, two people were taken into custody. You see that little red Honda there. Uh, that is where the uh, drug sales had been happening. We're told that an adult and a juvenile were taken into custody on scene. The juvenile is white, not sure about the adult. Uh, we hope that uh, police will uh, provide more details for us uh, tonight at 10 o'clock. But again, that arrest on 8th and Alter Street in Hazleton's northwest side. It's 5 o'clock now. It's probably about 3.30 or so this afternoon. The other breaking story from Wilkes-Barre, again, not a lot of details about this either. We do have a child hit by a car on Moy Allen Street. Moy Allen Street is kind of like the last one in what you call the heights or the front, like the southern end of the heights or the, the, the northernmost uh, uh, part of uh, the section of town that's known as Rolling Mill Hill. Uh, that just happened about 45 minutes ago. We understand there were a couple of streets blocked as uh, police and uh, rescue units are there for a child hit by a car on Moy Allen Street in Wilkes-Barre about 20 minutes ago or so. While we're in Wilkes-Barre, lots of news from the boob today. We got uh, two people arrested at Sherman Hills for allegedly shooting and killing a toddler in Brooklyn on Sunday. The shooting happened in Brooklyn. Apparently, these two guys came to hide out here. They are 23-year-old Daquan Breland and 19-year-old Daquan Wright. Uh, city police took them both into custody early this morning. At this point, no charges have been filed. And what the New York papers are saying is that the father of the toddler who was shot has been very uncooperative with police. They have identified the toddler as 16-year-old or 16-month-old Antique Hennis. And she was shot in the face in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn on Sunday, and again, the uh, two men uh, who uh, are alleged to have been involved uh, were picked up at Sherman Hills in Wilkes-Barre this morning. Speaking of Sherman Hills, it has now instituted uh, new rules. Among them, tenants have to register their vehicles with management and display a parking permit or get towed away. Residents have to register visitors who are over 16 years of age and make a photocopy 
of the visitor's identification. Vehicles also have uh, visitor visitors also have to register their vehicles to get uh, a parking pass and must park in the visitor parking lot. Tow trucks will haul resident and vehicles uh, visitors' vehicles away if they don't have a pass. And uh, a letter from a property manager that notes two violations will lead to immediate eviction. Sherman Hill's trying to get a handle on all the problems that they've had recently. Representative Dick Hess has died in a hospital. He was 74. Dick Hess is from Bedford County. And uh, anytime a, a state representative dies, of course, it sets off the balance of power and all that. Now, this is a very heavily Republican district, so it's very likely that a Republican will replace him. But why this, uh, in addition to the fact that the guy died, uh, the uh, big impact statewide is that Dick Hess was the Republicans' main point man on transportation issues, and Hess was the guy who took the uh, Senate proposal from Senator John Rafferty and the governor's proposal and trimmed them both down. And Hess was the guy who was the uh, creator, more or less the author, of the House transportation package that does not hammer drivers to the extent that the Senate package does. We watched this very closely when they were both introduced about a month and a half ago now, that uh, the uh, Senate version raised the cost of uh, license plates, the stickers, registration stickers, and vehicle inspections, and virtually every other cost related to driving. Hess's compromise proposal came up with about $1.4 million for road and bridge repairs, but didn't hammer drivers. What happens now remains to be seen. A Wilkes-Barre man has been charged with the robbery of a gas station in uh, November on Market Street. 26-year-old Nicholas K. Reed is facing three counts in the holdup of U.S. gas on November 11th. He was arrested this morning. In Larksville, police arrested a man on charges. He sexually molested three young girls and exposed himself to a fourth during sleepovers at his house. 43-year-old Francis Parsons was arraigned this morning by District Judge David Barilla in Swoyersville. Also in Larksville, a bicyclist has died from being hit by a car there last night. It happened on East Main Street. The coroner's office has identified him as 33-year-old Richard Swartz of Wilkes-Barre. How about this patch job, this uh, chip job in Tresco? Uh, we found this the other day, and this might not look like anything all that unusual, except that you see that PennDOT did this road, and you see how they did it. That car has been sitting there. Rather than have it moved or have it towed away, they instead chipped around the car. PennDOT has already gotten several complaints from residents in Tresco. Brilliant. Uh, we talked about American, Outfi uh, American Eagle Outfitters coming to the Humboldt Industrial Park back in May. Well, today it was learned that uh, the work that is coming here is coming from elsewhere in the state. American Eagles is closing a distribution center in Warrendale near Pittsburgh. Some job numbers came out today. The good news, the unemployment rate now stands at 7.3% nationwide. That's the lowest since December 2008, but there's a whole bunch of caveats and asterisks with them. Uh, first of all, the uh, job, the labor force participation rate, that is the number of people who are either employed or actively looking for work, now excludes 90 million people. That is the highest number outside of the labor force ever recorded. Also, the job creation numbers for the last three months have been revised downward by 74,000 jobs. This economy is still in the dumper. President, Eco uh, pre President Economy, President Obama will address the nation on Tuesday about Syria as he tries to build public support for his proposed military strikes on uh, Syria. At this point, every poll has shown there is very little support for striking Syria. Quick few things in sports. There's a new alcohol policy at Lafayette College in Easton. Under it, any student who violates the policy faces a two-week suspension of athletic activities. That's a fifth of the season. If you're a college football player, those violations may include an arrest, a college citation involving alcohol, or a trip to a hospital due to intoxication. That latter 
charge also carries increased penalties. Former New England Patriots wide receiver Aaron Hernandez pled not guilty to first-degree murder charges today. As you know, he's uh, facing charges in the murder of a friend, and he is continuing. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, still being held without bail in Massachusetts, though his uh, lawyers have reserved the right to request a bail hearing later. By the way, Hernandez is now a suspect in two earlier killings in 2012. The Cincinnati Reds are considering starting a or using ace starter Johnny Cueto out of the bullpen for the rest of the year. Cueto has been out with an arm injury. He's just about ready to come back. He's got a 3-3-3 ERA and a 4-1 to strikeout to walk ratio. But uh, the Cincinnati Inquirer says the Reds management has taken a look at what Tim Lincecum did with the Giants last year out of the pen, and they believe that uh, Cueto can do the same. The New York Islanders have a press conference on Monday. They will name John Tavares the 14th captain in team history. Knicks guard J.R. Smith has been suspended for the first five regular season games for violating the drug policy. The league didn't say what drug, but numerous sources, including several newspapers in New York, are saying it was marijuana possession. And Oneida Nation, American Indians, announced an ad campaign to try to coerce the Washington Redskins into changing their name. Congressman Lou Barletta and Dave Yonkai join me right after Joe in the Weather Center. Joe. Thank you very much. Mike. L.A. It is on. Thank you very much, L.A. All right, well, nice day today across our region. Uh, we saw the sunshine, uh, minimal clouds, very nice temperature-wise, very comfortable, uh, pleasant conditions, and this trend's going to last as we go into the daytime hours of tomorrow. Another cool night across our region tonight, although it won't be quite as chilly as what we've actually seen last night. Many locations dropping down into the 40s for overnight lows. Now, over the past six hours, it's been dry across our region. We'll stay dry for all those high school football games through tonight. Overlooking the Cunningham Valley, clear skies. Very nice indeed, and it will be nice for traveling over the next uh, few hours across our region. Harry's, you pull all parts. Almanac page for the day, 68 and 42. The split in temperatures, the averages are 76 and 56, 93 and 40. The record high and low, they still stand, 636, 728. Sunrise and sunset for tomorrow. Live Lehigh tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton, 69 degrees. Pressure coming in at 30.11 inches of mercury. And there you can see the winds, uh, not too much of a factor. 69 now, wilkes barre Grant International Airport, 66 in Mount Pocono, 70 in Allentown, 72 in Williamsport as well, Seals Grove and 71 in State College. Satellite and radar clear to mostly clear skies throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That will be the case as we go through tonight. Tomorrow shaping up to be a pretty nice looking day. I think we'll see temperatures in the 70s, with some locations getting to near 80 degrees. And as we go into our Sunday, may have to deal with a shower across our area. Overall looking pretty nice. It will be milder as we go into tomorrow. And then it's going to get a little bit cooler again. Another front comes through, which will help reinforce some cooler air. Here's what we can expect through tonight. 42 to 48 degrees, 72 to 78 for tomorrow, 53 to 59 as we go into tomorrow night. We will have more for you coming up after these commercial messages. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? The Gene Berger Performing Arts Center offers everyone the opportunity to experience the arts in a non-competitive atmosphere of education, exploration, creativity, safety, value, and fun. For 18 seasons, their experienced instructors have offered classes for toddlers through adults in tap, jazz, ballet, hip-hop, modern, gymnastics, and even mommy and me classes. With opportunities presented each season to perform, students are taught the needed fundamentals on which to build a solid dance foundation. Call and sign up for this season's classes today. 
Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. Come see for yourself. They have the freshest selection of meats, cheese, and produce. Baked goods made fresh on premises. They have an in-store butcher who is happy to accommodate your special orders. Be sure to stop in and check out their unadvertised specials. You'll find them throughout the store. See their flyer for weekly specials. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. This week only at Heritage, they're offering SureFine Deli Gourmet, Fresh Slice Swiss, or American Cheese at $3.99 a pound. Thank you for shopping at Heritage SureSave. For all your projects, large and small, Bedrock Gardens has it all. They are fully stocked and ready to fill your order. Rubber mulch and rubber curbing to match. Lots of color choices to pick from. Wall stone, natural stone, full pallets ready to go. Their bins are full with rich colored quality mulch that will look wonderful all season long. Finish off your fabulous outdoor space with their quality patio furniture and easy to assemble fire pits. Everything you need for your summer projects. Delivery available or just stop by and they will load you up. Bedrock Gardens, locally owned and operated. Call today. Join us this week on Wellness Street Physical Therapy. Ting's going to explain to us what causes lower back pain, how you can avoid it, and if you are uncomfortable, what he can do to help you out. That's all coming up this week on Wellness Street Physical Therapy. Join us. Topic A here on WYLN, of course, by every Friday co-host Dave Young. I'm very happy to have 11th District Congressman Lou Barletta. Very glad he could uh, spend the uh, almost the next hour here I'm with us. Glad to be here. And there's a lot to talk about. Ta a ton of talked about. And uh, although I have a fairly lengthy list here, Syria's got to top it. What's, what is your position on Syria right now? At this point, we've had Senator Pat Toomey gave sort of double answers, but apparently he's going to vote no. Casey's a yes. Marino's a no. Cartwright's undecided. As of yesterday, you were still undecided. Well, you know, I, I could tell you, L.A., there's a lot of questions that the president uh, needs to answer for me to vote yes uh, to attack Syria. You know, I need to know what, what is the goal? What is the plan? Uh, you know, what... Are we prepared for the unintended consequences, which I believe are inevitable uh, if we uh, send missiles into into Syria? Is that still what he's talking about? Because I heard, and I don't know, Dave, you might have heard this as well. I heard a couple of different radio stories this morning. ABC especially is saying that they got their hands on classified documents to say he's talking about B-1 bombers and the possibility of troops after that. So that's not just the little qualified strike that he right. was talking about the other day. He's talking about expanding it yeah. a little bit. Pa apparently the, the plan has changed 50 times now. Right. And which, see, that's part which, of the which, is, which is very troublesome for me, mm -hmm. is that the president drew this red line without a plan as to what happens if. And it almost seems like we're flying by the seat of our pants right now, and which should make people weary uh, that we get involved in something that is claimed to be no boots on the ground. Right. But if, I, if Iran or Russia gets involved or somebody attacks Israel and Israel retaliates or somebody retaliates against the United States, I guarantee you we're going to be involved. Well, I saw and we a could story. be in, 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 entrenched in, a, in another war that we can't get out of. I saw a story, and I, I, it was about two days ago, where someone had promised some group, and off the top of my head, it gets a little confusing. I don't know who, but said that if the U.S. attacks Syria, we're definitely hitting Israel. Well, you know, that's why I'm, I, I've been, you know, I, I feel like most Americans, and I can tell you the calls that I've received in our office, we have over a thousand calls. I was going to ask. Two. Two in favor. Two in favor. In fact, one of the two said, bomb Israel. <laughs> you, mentioned, okay. you, you mentioned that you had a briefing on Monday. I and, will be. And I don't expect you to tell us, you know, what, what the, you know, secrecy of that is, but... Could you take us into the process yeah. of how a congressman gets a briefing? Yeah, I can. And that's, that's the only reason why I haven't committed to voting no yet. Yeah. Uh, because I think it w you know, our constituents should want me to have all the information in front of me before I commit to, to that vote. And the classified briefing is on Monday. But what will happen is when we get these briefings, uh, when we're called in, it's in a, it's in a, a, a room underground. <laughs> Uh, we literally need to take off any type of communication. We can have no communications on us, no way of recording anything. Uh, and we'll go in, and depending on what the classified information is, we've had to take an oath, uh, which 
could we could face prison should we violate that oath of sharing any information that is classified uh, depending on what the uh, subject is and topic is you know we could see so many times the Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton will uh, will come in and give us the uh, classified information and uh, you know it's difficult Dave uh, when you have that information and you you've got to base your decision on some information that you can't share with people right and especially in a case like this when it is overwhelmingly against going into Syria uh, to not to be able to share that type of information makes it makes it difficult but it, with that being said I could tell you I, where I'm at I'm gonna do what I think is in the best interest of, of our country and the American people and I'm not gonna do what's politically best for me but I, I do not believe there is anything for the United States to be the world's policeman in a case like this That's and why we are not right. building a coalition of international allies. Well, he tried and nobody's interested at this point. I guess well, we got a couple British, of former Soviet republics well, in France, today, but Well, today, just it. this afternoon, uh, there was a joint uh, letter sent out, 11 nations, uh, w w along with the United States, uh, condemning the action and uh, calling for an, an international response but then if you read into it it s goes on that these uh, 10 other nations support the United States uh, taking I action see. and it, uh, you know, it's like you know why is it why are we the world's policemen in a case like this and, I mean, I, I, and what's the rush now had the president made a decision to attack Syria immediately and take Assad out and attack the military arsenal even though he didn't come to Congress, I probably would have supported the president's Other presidents decision. have done that. Reagan right. did and that. I have supported and that. Clinton I, did that. I don't know what it is. I, we, we said that we're not, we're not looking for a regime change. We've given him time to hide all of his military weapons. What's the rush now? And see, the disturbing thing is you're tipping your hand in terms of saying, well, well let's wait, because we were so on the air last yeah. Friday. I mean, if there's any military Saturday, installations, the down. everything's yeah. been moved out of the by now. Well, anyway. he's, re he, he's released prisoners to use as human shields. So, you know, I just don't understand why we are rushing in, uh, why we're not waiting. Let the new uh, UN inspectors give their report. Let's try to build a coalition. He, he can articulate a great message, our president. I, you know, he needs to do that. Yeah, now. I was he needs say, to, at this point, I don't think he's done it he so need, far. He needs to get in front of the American people and, and tell them why we need to do this. He needs to convince Congress why we need to do this uh, before he'll get my vote uh, to go into another war. Not to mention, and these are questions that we need to, can our military, are they even ready for something like this? That's Some true. of our men and women have Spread had three out. and four tours and yeah. five tours of duty. Uh, and you know, you think still about in places like Bosnia and Somalia that everybody forgets about. In but, addition to, but you also think about all those buses that came home a couple of weeks ago from soldiers in the National Guard from Kuwait right. and all those other places that they're coming home. They're coming home to their families. They think they're going to be safe for at least a couple of months. Get and now this up. comes up, and yeah. I've talked to people, and this is anecdotal, but I've talked to people who had loved ones come home, and now the Syria cloud is over their head, and they don't know whether they're going to be going back because they're still in active duty. And another fair question is, has sequestration already begun to dismantle our military to the point, can we handle multiple conflicts if, if that right. should happen? So I, I, I think it's foolish just to rush in now uh, before we have these questions answered. I'm going to ask you two things about what uh, Secretary of State John Kerry said this week. And if you've got the Secretary, St Secretary of State, you're probably going to be hearing from him on mm -hmm. Monday. He spoke to the Senate Committee the other day. Uh, first of all, he uh, has repeatedly said, we have proof, we have proof. But apparently he's getting that from the Arab League who are aligned with the rebels there. So I question whether or not that's valid proof. And secondly, yesterday he was quoted as saying that the Arab countries in the region will pay for the conflict. I felt a little offended by that because we've never done, we, you know, we're not a rent-a-cop for service. That's exactly, that was exactly my reaction to that when I heard that. Well, I'm going to tell you also, you know, I, I believe that American people and probably some members of Congress that were there feel, feel duped in the Iraq war when, the, when they were yep, given right. information that there were weapons of mass destruction and which were never found to be specific and and uh, so again even this classified information and I will be given the information of 
the so-called proof that Assad is responsible for using the chemicals. And let's, you know, let's make it clear that that is unacceptable for anyone to use chemical weapons mm -hmm. on on anyone. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't think but that we should is, do though, nothing. Is it Assad? Well, Who did it? <laughs> and and should it be just the United States? Right. There are many countries that signed the treaty. Uh, you know, this is against the international norm, and I think. What the president should be doing instead of campaigning in Scranton or golfing out in Las Vegas, he should be getting a coalition of countries together and explain to the American people, explain to Congress, here we are three weeks after, and I'm just getting information now as to why we need to go to war. Yeah. Have you heard anything from your Democratic colleagues? I mean, have you, do you have a have sense them. of what some of them I, have been I thinking? I have them, and I, and I believe that the president has lost the support of many Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, here as well, and and uh, that may have been, I can't say for certain. Right. But yeah. My instinct is, is that that may have been the reason why the president walked back uh, from he going to attack on his own to now con what, consulting yeah. with Congress. Last week we were under the impression twenty minutes and the missiles are going to be flying. Yeah. Right. So he's he's certainly something's happened to uh, to change his opinion, and and it could be that that he he doesn't even have. Uh, true support of, of many in his own party, and, and uh, Nancy Pelosi said that she's not going to be pressuring any Democrats, any whipping any Democrats into the vote. So, let me flip that around on you, though. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, your leader, John Boehner, the House Speaker, he's already said he is for this and he will vote for this resolution. So did Majority Leader Cantor. So are you taking a chance, being a Republican, saying I'm, I'm probably going to vote no? I've already made it clear to leadership. You know, I'm going to do what I think is right. Uh, they will have no persuasion on my decision, uh, and I've done that in the past for other things uh, as well. So, and, and to be honest with you, I, I haven't received any kind of pressure at no, all. No, we're going to cut off that project at home no, or anything like no. that. None of that stuff. No, it's not. And, and uh, that being said, it wouldn't change my mind anyway. That, you know, this may be the most important vote that I'll take in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, if this turns out to be a, a, a regional war and loss of lives and uh, so I'm taking it very seriously, and that's why I'm going to wait to make sure I have all. Uh, although, if I had a vote right now, if I had a vote right now today, I would vote no. Oh, no. But with that being said, I think I owe it to to everyone to make sure I have all of the information before. What, I, what would it, I was going to go to break? But what would it take, like uh, proof that somebody had missiles pointed at New York or Miami or something like that? It would have to be pretty compelling for me to change my mind right now with with and all of the questions that we talked about would have to be answered in a in a very clear way uh, have we thought out if Russia or Iran gets involved if Israel is attacked if we if there's retaliation right here in the United States mm -hmm. we know Hezbollah has entered the United States through our open borders what if there's an attack here if these questions are answered, all of them need to be answered for me to to just rush in and say, you know, let's send a message. And, and that's the other part of this is, what is the goal? What is the message that's being sent? That's the first thing. I don't understand yeah. what it would be. And, Naughty boy? And, I, and, and, you know, I've heard that we need to do this because our credibility is on the line. And, and to be honest with you, I think our credibility was lost a while ago. I don't know how we become more credible by tossing missiles into Syria in the eyes of the international world. I don't know how that makes us more credible. I think the credible thing to do is say this is unacceptable, what Assad has done. We believe we have proof. Show the proof. Wait for the UN inspectors to come back with their proof and their report. They've been and then, shot at by the rebels, too. And then, build, right, and then build a, a coalition to decide what we're going to do about this. But I don't think the United States you know, everyone, we're all behind you. Go ahead and uh, and get into war. We support you. I, I, that's not, that won't win me over. And it's mm -hmm. also a dangerous time, too, because it's right around the 9-11 anniversary. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think uh, that's hanging over the heads of a lot of people. That's I, right. I, well, that's the yeah. ironic thing. You know, I forgot about it. Now that you mentioned that, the one story I heard on ABC radio this morning said is he's going to be calling for a vote in the House on September 11th, next Wednesday. I don't know about that. I don't know yeah. Such great timing. All right, our Not guest today timing. is Congressman Lou Barletta. We'll be back with him in just a couple of minutes. We'll break when we come back. Joe's got weather wisdom. It's Topic A on WYLN. Stay right here.
Swing to Big Bad Voodoo Daddy October 18th at the Alice E. Wilsey Performing Arts Center at the Historic Castle in Hazleton. 2013 marks the 20th anniversary of Big Bad Voodoo Daddy's remarkable arrival onto the music scene. And today, the high-energy nine-piece ensemble continues to remind the world that it's still cool to swing big band style. Join the party. Shake and move to the groove October 18th. Advanced tickets are available through Ticketmaster starting August 31st. Tyrone's Market has been serving the Hazleton area for 70 years with the freshest meats, homemade Italian hot and mild sausage, dried Tyrolean sausage, try their chicken or beef kebabs, and much more. Tyrone's Market, 819 Alter Street, Hazleton. Rotary of Mountaintop is pleased to announce and host a Taste of the Mountain Sunday, September 8th from 2 to 5 p.m. at Edgewood in the Pines. A food, wine, and beer sampling with live music. Advance tickets are $25, 30 at the door. Hi, I'm Liz Tolan. I'd like to invite you to the first annual COPS event. It's taking place on September 21st right here at the Butler Township Community Center. This event brought to you by WYLN 35 in Hazleton, the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance, and other area sponsors will consist of a 5K run, 5K walk, kids fun run, open air concert, free cookout for the community, crafters, tricky trades, and so much more. Proceeds from this event will go to benefit four area police departments. When you call these men and the men and women they serve with, they're going to be there for you. Won't you take one day out of your busy schedule and be there for them? When it comes to the wire guys, you are going to have an amazing experience. And if it means giving you back your money, plus, I'm going to do it. We guarantee everything, 112% money back guarantee, labor and material guaranteed for a year, so that you don't really need to worry about it. You're gonna walk up to the wall, throw the switch, put your power cords in, the outlets, and everything is the way it's supposed to be. Call me, your time is valuable. If we're late, you get paid. Off the Beaten Path is a half hour program that showcases interesting and unique people, places and things in Pennsylvania. Hosted by Jeff Bonomo, Brian Bromley, and Ken Cara, Off the Beaten Path is fast-paced, light-hearted, and sometimes even downright funny. Each show, we travel to many destinations in Pennsylvania, including restaurants, events, unique landmarks, and we talk with interesting people. So come with us Off the Beaten Path. Well, it was hurricane easy, not so easy, if you will, dealing with Yankee Town, Florida back in 1950. How about this for a statistic? 38.7 inches of rain in just a 24-hour time period. Well, now is the time we often see that early morning fog developing across our region. What ends up happening is you get a lot of the nighttime heat loss. The temperatures drop to near the uh, dew point level, and that really saturates the atmosphere. The moisture condenses, and as a result, you see that fog during the early morning hours. Our midday Pennsylvania lottery numbers, we want to thank the Beer Garage for sponsoring them. The Daily 699, the Big Four, 8678. Quinto number 65021, and the Treasure Hunt numbers 1320, 24, 27, and 28. Another unique location, Fawn Lake, Washington. It's been rainy out in that region. Nothing to show you live, 35 Skycast Doppler. It is dry, temperature-wise, 69 in Shenandoah, 72 in Berwick, 70 degrees in Monoy City. Skycast precipitation and clouds keeps things dry through tonight. It'll stay dry through tomorrow. Maybe an isolated shower for tomorrow night. Maybe a shower as we go into our Sunday, but that's pretty much about it. So if you're traveling the next few hours, things looking pretty good for traveling across all of our region. No weather-related problems to contend with. You'll be in pretty good shape through the rest of this evening and through the overnight hours. A cool night, though, tonight. Uh, again, dropping down into the 40s, but I don't think it'll be quite as chilly as what we saw last night. And again, tomorrow, a little bit milder, getting up into the 70s. Wilkes-Barre area, seven-day extended forecast looking like this. Overall, not too bad. Looking at the numbers in the mid to upper 70s to near 80 degrees, a shower or two around maybe for Sunday, and then a shower or storm for Wednesday and Thursday of next week. More Topic A coming at you after this break. The Beer Garage, 202 East Diamond Avenue in Hazleton. More than just beer, coffee, all sizes, only $1. Get your lottery tickets here, too. Stop in today, The Beer Garage in Hazleton. 
SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Circuit for Women, 1090 Church Street, Hazel Township. A woman's fitness center specifically designed with a variety of fitness options to help you look and feel your best. Featuring a complete 30-minute workout and weight management program that is fun, fast, and safe. Also offering yoga classes and Latin dance combined with circuit strength training. We are affiliated with the Silver Sneakers program. Convenient hours and professional staff to help you reach your goals. Call today for an appointment at 570-453-3180. All Care Home Care, the health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice for your care. Call us and we'll be there. Watch the 2013 Schuylkill County Firefighters Parade on WYLN at the following times on your screen. Join in the 150th anniversary of Monoy City only on WYLN. We're your local network. Five thirty-six. We're back on uh, topic AM this Friday afternoon. Yankai Tyrone and Congressman Lou Barletta. Let's stay overseas. The other hot spot that has kind of quieted down on the last two week, last two weeks, Egypt. Um, the Obama administration, specifically then Secretary Hillary Clinton, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, had much to do with the toppling of uh, Mubarak, and then Morsi was quote unquote elected, uh, and then sat started to change the constitution and the military said enough and it's kind of dangling there your thoughts on all of that well you know there, there was a lot of controversy over whether or not we should cut off all, all military aid to to egypt and uh, i supported military aid to the egyptian military uh not to morsi uh but to the egyptian military good when, 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 <laughs> i agree good when, when the egyptian military because that was the best chance of stability there yeah. in, in egypt uh, then the riots broke out and uh at that point uh, my position has been until the riots uh, subside. I think we should hold back and sending any any type of military aid there, only uh, because I I was concerned of, of them getting into the wrong hands uh, of of of, uh, of terrorists. So until the riots subside, I don't think we should give them any more aid. But I do believe we need to back the Egyptian military because that's our best chance for stability. Um, the Obama administration has been a little confusing I think as to what aid what was or was not cut off I mean I heard two or three different administrations well, the, economic, spokesmen. the economic aid had been cut off had been cut off absolutely that's what I was gonna get President to Obama me. had cut that off and and uh, approximately 1.3 billion uh, have has already gone in in the military aid and uh, that's on hold right now um, the balance at this point uh, again it, it appears to be relatively quiet but this is the Muslim Brotherhood um, who from whom uh, Morsi came and this administration has backed it and I'm confused as to why I mean I know you can't answer for the administration but it does seem to me that uh, that the military would like some sort of stability I don't know necessarily democracy but has Egypt ever had democracy? well they, you know that's what they thought they were going to get with Morsi because he campaigned on that mm -hmm. and then once he went in as you said he tried changing the, the the Constitution and and then you know there's a question now whether or not we can even give aid to them because was it a military coup because that well yeah because there were some disputes over some reporters using the term coup right, right. and some from the administration using the word coup and they're like, well no it's not really a coup right. what's the difference well there's no <laughs> real definition of what a coup is and who determines it whether it's a coup you know so you know that 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 really is a, 
a moot point at this. Yeah. Well, and from a political standpoint, too, by backing the Muslim Brotherhood, it basically has um, enhanced the fact that the misconception that Barack Obama is Muslim. It and, has, and Glenn yes. Beck uh, mm -hmm. you know, said on one of his sites that, uh, you know, there are people that are infiltrating the White House who are part of the Muslim Brotherhood. And that is not true, but and again, it was not a good thing politically for and him I, And I, you know, Dave, I also think that's part of the reason why the American people right now are so cold in the Syria situation mm -hmm. because at this point I don't think they trust anyone there. Who's the good guys? Who's the bad guys? Uh -huh. We back the rebels. Rebels are intertwined with Al Qaeda. You know, I think at this point the American people say at the end of the day, you're never going to bring stability there. We have enough problems here at home. You know, let's not lose Pretty any more. Pretty much one who's in agreement with what you just said. Well, yeah. right, and I think that they remember that we backed the Taliban during uh, the, you know, first wars in the 1980s. So, yeah. yeah, I think you're 100% right. And it's very hard to tell the players without a scorecard. Mm -hmm. Really, it is. Yeah, and when you look at it with the rest of the Arab Spring, with Tunisia mm -hmm. and all the rest of that, I mean, right. we created, I think, we created a lot of unrest and instability in the Middle East where, you know, Mubarak might not have been George Washington, but they had a relatively right. free press and at least it was stable and he was an American ally. And you have so many people fleeing these these countries and, you know, in Syria, you have two million people fleeing uh, Syria into other countries and, and uh, which creates another you know, problems for those nations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the American people right now think let's focus on some of our domestic problems here and, and uh, uh, they don't have a lot of confidence that that the United States is going to be able to solve the world's problems. Let's focus on some of our domestic questions. One of them, Obamacare, the, as, and it, where the president didn't want the term at one point. Last year he said, I love it, I embrace it, so I started calling it Obamacare. I had been calling it the Affordable, Affordable Health Care Act, but he likes that, so okay. I make him call it the Affordable <laughs> Health Care Act, I do, but anyway. Uh, it's, it's about, what do you want to call it tonight? Uh, let's call it Obamacare. Okay, I'm good okay. with that. Um, it's, it's set to take effect in uh, January. He's already put off the employer mandate. What about the individual Actually, mandate? Actually, in October, a lot of it's going to start kicking in. And I let me just say off, the, you know, from the top, I, obviously I oppose uh, Obamacare. I have voted 40 times to defund, dismantle, and repeal it. And a lot of it is ceremonial, as you know, because okay. it's not going to... That was not, one of his questions. He was going to ask you. It's ceremonial. It's, it really, it, yeah. it, it's not going anywhere. What could be Senate. gained by it? That's what it's very gonna, little. Yeah. Very little. Uh, however, I believe for the first time, and, and there's, a, there's a, uh, some support, people want me to vote against the continuing resolution if Obamacare is not defunded, and we'll, we right. can talk about that. Right. But, but let me get back to, I think for the first time we actually have a chance to stop Obamacare. And I believe the president made a political misstep when he issued the policy, the executive order. Uh, uh, for the employer mandate delay, which would delay the employer mandate until January 1st, 2015. Mm. We said that you don't have the constitutional authority to do that, that only Congress can make that law. And you can't. However, that's a good idea. So we're going to take your idea and we're going to codify it and make it the law, which we did. And then we said, however, we don't think it's right for you to discriminate against individuals. individuals. If you're going to give businesses a break, then we should give individuals a break. So then we made this, we passed the second law giving the individual mandate delay to January 1st, 2015. Mm -hmm. We had over 20 Democrats out of 35 vote with us in the House. I believe it puts anyone in Washington in a very difficult position to, be, to come home and campaign and tell their people that they were willing to give business a break, but they weren't willing to, uh -huh. to delay the individual mandate. I think it puts senators in a tough spot. I don't know how you know Harry Reid avoids not bringing this up for a vote. I was, I was just yeah. going to say, both of them, they're languishing in the Senate, right? They are. Well, one of the problems with the health care bill is, and I am for the health care bill, I think that um, something needs to be done with it. But my you problem- You were mad when he issued the employer mandate. Oh yeah, mandate. We t the employer the mandate, because if you're gonna do it, do it now. Because yeah. right now, everybody's expecting the health care exchanges to start. Right. right now, there are insurance companies that are gearing up for it. And what this does is it takes their work plan, which they have been working on, because the insurance companies are gonna benefit from this, it completely derails them because right now all they all they have to sell on their quote-unquote health care store 
is going to be individual plans, but they can't do the business plans. And the lifeblood of any healthcare insurance company is the, business the businesses. Plan, because that's where most people because get their healthcare. Because that's basically right. where they get their healthcare. And, you know, people have the, mis the misconception as well, my employer pays for it, it's free. Well, no, it's not free because you do have right. co-pays. Right. But I, th I was Unless like, you're a teacher in the old Ford school district. Or the Wyoming <laughs> Area School District. <laughs> no, but isn't this centric. just all a mess? I just think there's too much government involved in this. And if you paid for your own, the cost would be a lot less and it wouldn't be so muddled as well, it is now. I can tell you, I've had three uh, town hall meetings in the last week and that was the number one one issue in every single town hall people asking they they're scared to death of the Affordable Care Act they're seeing that the employers are now going down to part-time workers you just saw what UPS That's is right. doing now 29 UPS, hours UPS uh, eliminating spousal spouses mm -hmm. from the plans employers are going to start doing everything that they can a very hardly talked about uh, part of the Affordable Care Act is, is that uh, illegal immigrants are waived from participating in the Affordable Care Act, which means now employers can now replace their legal workers with with illegal immigrants and not have to provide health care to them and won't they won't get fined. So I think in some of the states, in the, you know, whether it be California or Arizona, where there's uh, a high population, you may see that also being done. So I think there are a lot of problems uh, with it, and, and uh, people are, are scared. Time's flying by. We're running out for this hour. Let me jump outside quickly to Joe Garbacek in the uh, weather center. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, let's go over to the weather hey, center with Joe Garbacek. I'm sorry, Joe. Wrong place. Wrong place, but that's okay. I'm indoors now instead of outdoors. But, you know, we got nothing to show you live. 35 Skycast Doppler. It's dry. 66 degrees. Our live Lehigh Tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton. Upper 60s, lower 70s in the Wyoming Valley area. And that's the case throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We're going to be dealing with clear to mostly clear skies through the rest of this evening and through tonight. The weekend at this point, Saturday looking pretty good. Maybe Sunday we may have to deal with a shower across our area. 42 to 48 for tonight, 72 to 78 for tomorrow, 53 to 59 as we head into tomorrow night. Extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys. A division of Arc Electric, here's what we can expect over the next uh, couple of days. Temperatures generally in the 70s and upper 60s. Stick around, we'll have more for you after the break. Swing to Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, October 18th at the Alice E. Wilsey Performing Arts Center at the historic Castle in Hazleton. 2013 marks the 20th anniversary of Big Bad Voodoo Daddy's remarkable arrival onto the music scene. And today, the high-energy nine-piece ensemble continues to remind the world that it's still cool to swing big band style. Join the party. Shake and move to the groove October 18th. Advanced tickets are available through Ticketmaster starting August 31st. Weatherwood is a privately owned 200-bed nursing and rehabilitation center. Nestled within the quiet town of Weatherly, PA, we offer our residents and their families tranquil and scenic views from just about anywhere in the building. We are located within minutes of Hazleton General Hospital as well as major metropolitan medical and trauma centers in the Lehigh Valley. Whispering Meadows is a 50-bed secured dementia unit within our facility. Whether you need short-term, long-term, or respite stay, call or stop by today for a tour. Tennyson's Incorporated Machine Shop in Hazleton and Whitehaven. They specialize in automotive, industrial, and small engine parts. If you want reliability and quality, go to Tennyson's. Call them at 570-455-7761 or in Whitehaven, 570-443-9513. Mohican Sun at Pocono Downs presents Fun Fest in Hazleton, September 7th and 8th. Free entertainment at Three Sages, Crafts, Plastic Cars, and much more. There's also a burger cook-off and pastry bake-off, senior activities, a teen street party, Latin music celebration, and of course, the Great Fun Fest Parade, celebrating a totally 80s weekend. Admission is free and parking is free. Call 1-800-OKF-FEST or go to funfestpa.org. Fun Fest is made possible through the support of its corporate sponsors. If you want the entire story, then you want WYLN's Late Edition. 
more than headlines, more than interviews. It's the whole story. In-depth discussions on hot topics and more. Plus, meteorologist Joe Garbacic gives you the area's most accurate weather report from the WILN Weather Center. Get the whole story on WILN's Late Edition, weeknights at 10 on WILN, where your local network. We're back on this Friday afternoon with uh, Congressman Lou Barletta. All right, one of the things that you mentioned in passing, the continuing resolution, that brings up two questions. Number one, would you be willing to, in effect, shut the government down if the continuing resolution funds Obamacare? And number two, we've been living on continuing resolutions for five and a half years. Are we ever going to see a federal budget again? Well, I'll answer your first question, no. I will not vote uh, to shut the government down if Obamacare is funded in it. And, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of support. Uh, people want me to vote against the continuing resolution, but I, I, I need to explain that that will not uh, produce the, the outcome that people want. Much of Obamacare is mandatory spending. Mm -hmm. So even if I did, and we did shut the government down, it, it would not kill Obamacare. I'm not willing So the, to, so the administration the, is right about that. It said that there's not a lot of discretionary no, spending uh, left. It's are, already mandated. There, it's, yeah, there is mandatory spending in there, so it won't produce the outcome that they're looking at. And I'm not willing to, to uh, shut the government down to for my 41st vote okay. to do something that won't uh, accomplish what we're trying to do, and, and it's very popular, and I know people want me to do it, but I don't want to. I don't really want to. I don't want to mess around with military pay and uh, what it'll do to our economy uh, just to, to make another ceremonial vote that won't accomplish it. So no, I, I've been upfront that I'm not going to do that. Is there in Congress? Is there like a um, uh, like different caucuses for the Tea Party? I mean, you know, and have you been asked to join it? I mean, do they meet separately or? Or are they just, you no, know, members that no, are identified? No, I haven't. And, and surprisingly, I, I don't have a very good score with Heritage. Mm -hmm. and, and I uh, saw. You, you got uh, the last year, I think it was like a 49 or something. And Marino, who gets beat up on the radio for being Mr. Ultra Conservative, had like a 53. So that, that, they're very moderate scores, actually. I, I tell everyone, when you're a mayor, you have to be practical. Yeah. Uh, there, there comes a time when you need to be practical, and there's an, I believe there's an art of negotiating, and you go in and you try to get the un impossible, but then you settle for the best deal you can get somebody, mm -hmm. and you take it back and say, listen, this is the best deal I can get you. Well, it doesn't work like that in Washington, because you get beat up when you come back and s people say you caved in, and, you know, why did you do that? But that's just, you know, so I, there is, I'm not part of... Uh, the Tea Party Caucus, although I, you know, in election time I may get support, whether it be based on my immigration stance or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I try to be as practical as I can w on the issues. I part with my party when it, when it comes to uh, uh, LIHEAP, Heating Assistance for the Elderly, and uh, CDBG. I, I thought you know, here in Hazleton we were able to... I was going to say, you used, used it quite it, effectively right, here. Right, right. And so I differ with my colleagues on the Republican side when it comes to issues like that and um, so well, I think the difference is you've actually been there like doing using those programs right. and I think that's a, yeah well you know I also I, I you know I got bad scores because of uh, I, I voted for uh, a disaster assistance but I saw what happened to our district with the floods with hurricanes you saw all of it first and we yeah. still have right. <laughs> video right. of you strolling right. through the mud over right. in bloomsburg yeah um completely different subject and i was going to bring up immigration but we're running out of time i don't know where that bill stands if it's ever coming up for a vote but one thing i heard um defense secretary chuck hagel talk about is another BRAC commission base closure and realignment commission and immediately our uh lieutenant governor jim Colley was at toby hannah yesterday right. saying we'll fight for our bases so again another two-pronged question uh number one where does that stand? Is that likely to happen? And number two, would you support closing bases if they no longer have a military function, even if there are a lot of jobs there? Well, you know, Toby Hanna has gained every time there was a Somebody block. else, that's true. Because, you know, the work they do. Now, I think that we need to begin to look at, as these wars wind down, they're going to have less work there. It's not going to be for because of sequestration. It's going to be because we're not in battle any longer. Uh, I have not heard of any serious movement right no. now of, of any bra you know, new BRAC right now. And because but it's not out of the question, I'm sure, because I also have the Army War College now in, in, 
the 11th Congressional District, and their concern there as well. Yeah, well, well, you know what, that does kind of bring up another question, though, and back to Tea Party and, and the party splits and everything. Republicans have always been, for the most part, opposed to any cuts in military spending. I am a registered Republican, and I think there are places you can cut the military, that some things are I think every department can. can. I think every department, there's room to, room to cut. I, uh, let's be honest. That's why I wish we would go to zero-based budgeting. Uh, you know, instead of this baseline budgeting that is just inflated, and they add in. Only in Washington, when you decrease the increase, they call it a cut. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah, even if you it's look true. at the statewide level, Governor Corbett is getting beat up for cutting education. In fact, he's actually raising... And, and <laughs> Thank I'm a God! Somebody else noted this! Well, yes, no, it's only exactly common right. sense. And, I mean, Ed Rendell, and I love Ed Rendell, yeah. and he, 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 he took that surplus, and uh, but but the surplus is gone. So the Corbett, stimulus money he yeah, used. Yeah, basically Corbett uh, raised it, but the perception is, the perception is, is that he cut it. That perception is beat, beaten into the head of everybody right. through the PS. SEA and some of those others, but in Pennsylvania, the basic ed subsidy is $5.5 billion under Tom Corbett. That is the highest it has ever been. As Casey Stengel used to say, you could look it up. We're out of time. I appreciate you, you so much coming Thank in. You. Thank you very much. Okay. 11th District Congressman Lou Barletta. Joe will wrap it up when we return. It's Topic A on WILN. Your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group. Your health. That's our specialty. Visit us for the lowest prices on furniture, mattresses, appliances, and electronics. This month, save 50% on Sealy mattresses or save up to $100 on select Lazy Boy furniture. And ask about our interest-free financing plans. Shop GrandCentral.com or visit us on Vine Street in Hazleton or Route 93 in Hazel Township. Everybody shop Grand Central, making your house a home. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated at 542 North Wyoming Street in Hazleton, serving the greater Hazleton area since 1890 and still family owned and operated, offers convenient parking, handicapped accessibility, seating for over 150 people, casket, cremation, product showrooms to accommodate traditional cremation and pre-planned funerals. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated, 570-454-3341. I've got three great deals for you. Here's a 2013 Mazda 3i Sports Sedan, just $187 a month, sign and drive. Or this 2014 Mazda 6 Sky Active, 38 miles per gallon, $245 a month, sign and drive. Or this great 2014 Mazda CX-5 Sky Active, just $299 a month, sign and drive. Plus, we'll give you more for your trade. Burger Mazda, just off exit 145 off ID1, Route 93, Hazleton. WILN TV 35, first in live sports. Hi, I'm Ron Jaworski. For the best in local TV sports, watch WYLN TV 35. WYLN TV 35 has it covered. Hi, my name is Vince Papelli. I'm a former Philadelphia Eagle wide receiver and special teams guy. And for local sports coverage, I watch only WYLN 35. WYLN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights. We're at 68 outside our television station right now in Hazleton. And temperature-wise across our area in the 60s and lower 70s, clear to mostly clear skies. No precipitation to deal with. Milder conditions as we head into our Saturday. Tonight, here's what we can expect. 42 to 48 degrees, mostly clear. 72 to 78 for tomorrow. Nice looking day. 53 to 59 as we head into tomorrow night. Extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys at Division of Arc Electric. Here's what we can expect over the next couple of days. For the most part, temperatures in the upper 60s and some 70s out there. A few chances of a little bit of some rain here and there, but uh, nothing too significant. Yeah, if it rains on Sunday, this will be the fifth Sunday in a row that it has rained. Yeah, we're starting the trend. <laughs> What's going on? We're starting the trend on that one. <laughs> 
Cody, All right. you're before I wore socks today for the first time. I'm since April the 15th. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, yeah, you did. Winter Saturday. time, yeah. No, but anyway. It's far from winter time. It's just, I'm. Um, it's cold. Five Sundays in a row. Old guys get cold. Ah, it's not cold. Anyway, it's nice. Old guys hate rain, too, so anyway. Yeah. Uh, high school football yes. here tonight. The uh, Crusaders and the Cougars both trying to avoid going 0 and 2 tonight. So it's at Memorial Stadium. The uh, kickoff is at 7 o'clock tonight. Hazelton area and Coughlin High School football right here on W. I have to tell you that the high school football games that the station does are incredible. I think that you guys have good coverage, and um, a lot of people in the Wilkesbury area look forward to it, and all Hazelton area too. So yeah, but it's a very big, good. To I, a big plug, and I even called them this on radio. So I haven't. Uh, it's not as though I haven't said this. Uh, Marty Burns is the best play-by-play yep. play man in the business, without here. a doubt. Yep. Great, absolutely great. Does it? We'll see you tonight at 10. to Legally Speaking. I'm your host, Liz Tolan. I'm here at the Slesso Law Firm with attorney Chris Slesser. Hello, Chris. Hello again, Liz. It's nice to see you, and Great I see we brought our, our friend attorney John Salt with us again today. How are you, John? I'm well, Liz. Thank glad you, to be back. Thank you for joining us. We're glad to have you here. And John, so you're going to kind of help us through understanding the rights and responsibilities of being an adult. Yes, that's correct. Given that we have a lot of young folks headed off to college or joining the workforce, we thought it would be a good time to talk about some common situations that the newly 18 may be uh, dealing with, as well as some pitfalls they may want to avoid. That's super. Now, you said the newly 18. Is that is that how you would legally define an adult? That is how the law defines an adult, an individual who's reached the age of mature majority in Pennsylvania. It's 18. 18. Okay. Well, when we come back after the break, you're going to take us through some of those rights and some of those responsibilities to those... Uh, young people that are coming of age and, and for their parents as well. If you're watching and you have one of those young people in your home, you might want to call them into the living room during the break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. I've got three great deals for you. Here's a 2013 Mazda 3i Sports Sedan, just $187 a month, sign and drive. Or this 2014 Mazda 6 Sky Active, 38 miles per gallon, $245 a month, sign and drive.